2024 Board of Public Works and Safety meeting to order. Mike Pavey, please lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of minutes, do I have a motion? So moved. Second, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Public comment, uh, I do. Thank you. Clerk Treasurer, claims approval. Thank you. Okay, we have um, the quarterly payroll uh, is $1,926.88. That's for police and fire merit. Motion to approve. Second discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We have civil city claims in the amount of $138,065.68. Make a motion to approve. Second discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. I'm sorry. I think I missed your first payroll. Uh, Regular payroll in the amount of $519,571.02. Make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Sewage claims in the amount of $331,044.61. Make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. And then water claims in the amount of $227,149.91. Make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Department head reports. Brief and to the point, Craig Phillips. <laughs> You poor thing. I have nothing new to report this morning. Just same as last meeting. So, Mark Schreiber, Park Department. Uh, ju just a brief heads up, uh, especially on behalf of the volunteers who uh, do most of the maintenance out on the mountain bike trails, uh, in, or actually just the trails in uh, Soldiers Memorial Park. Uh, please try to stay off them when the weather's like this, especially when we, you know, we're going to be having snow and all kinds of things this week. Make sure it's always firm, otherwise we tear those trails up. And also a reminder to all residents that horses are not allowed in the park. Uh, we've seen some evidence of some horse hooves on the uh, trails. Uh, that does quite a bit of damage, especially when we get into this, if we get a, a freeze thaw type thing. So just a reminder uh, to respect the trails. Uh, those that are out riding don't ride when, the, when, when they're soft like this. And uh, let's keep the, the horses, the motorized vehicles, the mopeds, all that kind of stuff off as well. So thank you. What about goats? <laughs> goats? They're only for yoga. You know, we, we are considering goats as, you know, maybe to keep the grass down. But no, no, no goats. I thought you said ghosts at first. And then I got a little, <laughs> got a little scared. But no. Tim Warner, water. We'll be starting our spring hydrant flushing April 14th. That's a Sunday night. Uh, crews will be out from 8 p.m. till 5 a.m. That usually lasts anywhere from four to five weeks. If anybody gets caught with rusty water uh, in the morning when they wake up, just let your cold water run until it clears up. If for some reason you're doing laundry and you get some staining in your laundry, you can contact us and we'll bring you out some rust out. Well, that's the wastewater. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, that's all I have. I don't have anything to report. Nick Menick Engineering. Um, to start True Cell Project, we had um, some meetings with NIPSCO. They're going to start their gas relocation, which is kind of the, the final stage. So everything is on track for completion yet this, this spring, early summer. And I had a conversation last night regarding the state and the locals, the Indiana Ave Project. When that begins, we and they will work within the local ordinance and will not will work towards starting around 7 around 7 a.m. Yeah, correct. So what they do is um, they're at uh, stage three. They, they go to final tracings next. So there's different stages that they submit things. During the final tracing stage, right around that time, they create a, a contract prep document. And, um, and that's where any kind of like local regulations as far as hours and things like that, those go into that document. So 
Um, it's something that probably hasn't been fully prepared yet and hasn't been vetted by, say, their construction dar department and others, but it, it will be created and, and it, it does um, kind of, it is the state. <laughs> they, they have a little more control than we do on everything, but, um, but they do their best to adhere to our local ordinances when it comes to that sort of thing. Which means they will start around 7 a.m.? Around 7 a.m. 7 a.m. or after is the goal. Perfect. Nick Otis, attorney. I just, Rick Ogle's going to be ecstatic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I let Mr. Ogle know last, last evening from. You should have let him know at about 6.30 this morning. That would <laughs> <laughs> He was struggling hearing, hearing from me at the Falcons. So uh, uh, 7 a.m., no, he's been made aware. I have a couple items on the agenda, but nothing other than that. Jeff Batchelor, uh, code. We're taking and working on signs, political signs that are too big for what's up now, going around and talking to them. And then we're also working on boarded up windows throughout the whole city and that stuff, because that was a topic this morning on the, on the radio station. So we're working on that right now. Well, I, and I think you've been flexible. The plywood over windows is not allowed by ordinance. Right. And uh, we understand we're not gonna, as we call it, plywood city, not gonna have it in Laporte. So I think we've had enough opportunity for people to replace the plywood well and that's and the thing get we windows take, in we give them a chance to take and put it up there just so they can get the means to take and put the windows back in but it's been there too long now and painting plywood does not meet the spec right chief Ma Buell. mayor i do oh. think one thing with with mr bachelor that we've talked about with, regarding political signs we have a deadline when they need to come out after the election we don't have one at the at the start and i think I was contacted by a couple of the candidates, and, and I think Jeff feels okay. the same way. Probably have to go through the council to address an ordinance about when the signs can start, right? I, I think Correct. that's been a criticism that we've received. That the city can we do a 30-day instead of a 60-day? I, I think we have flexibility, and let, I'll have to check to see if there's a state law making it longer, for example. But um, as long as we're consistent, I, typically we're, we're okay. I've put out as many signs as anybody, and I don't think we need to be out more than 30 days. Great. Agreed. Chief Buell. Nothing to report. Chief Snyder. Uh, applications for employment, uh, the deadline was last Wednesday, so now moves on to the 13th for the mental aptitude part of the test. So had a good uh, pool to choose from, looks like. Great. Roscoe Hoffman, IT. That was Bert Cook. Bert Cook. Mike Frey, Street Department. Uh, this week, picking up, doing um, drains and street sweeper went out and did them um, out there on 39. They got too muddy, so we had to pull them off. And then we batching and doing stumps. Mike, also, um, could you work with Mr. Phillips about uh, 39 North we've mentioned and we've had a couple calls of people wanting to know when the welcome sign will move uh, to the appropriate place so if we could coordinate that between you and Mr. Phillips Certainly to will. get that moved thank yes. you we're excited Jess Bruder communications will it be where all the signs for you are good morning board um, I'll just be really brief the Travel Indiana magazine for the spring issue that we partnered on is out. Um, we don't have physical copies yet. Rather than bringing in printed off versions, I decided I'd wait and in two weeks I'll bring you the physical copy for your review. That's it. Beth West, Transport. Andrea Smith, HR. board members Andrea Smith HR director just two short things um, currently we are in our second day of the OSHA 10 safety class we have 17 employees signed up for it which is fantastic um, today it will end and they will graduate and get their OSHA 10 cards um, the safety course helps them identify and avoid um, on-the-job hazards so it's a plus and a win for the city of LaPorte and then um, yesterday, Nick Otis received his copy of the revised employee handbook, and uh, I wish him well reviewing that because <laughs> it's lengthy. <laughs> and that's all I have today. Thank, Thank you. you. Those that do not have business before this board, go have a great day. 
Request for use, O'Reilly Car Show. And that, Leffler. Good morning. So uh, last year, O'Reilly's um, had a car show. It was their first annual, and uh, it was very successful. They had it a little bit later in the year. This year, they're partnering with Rusted Knuckles, and they're going to have their car show um, at the, on the same day as the uh, official downtown cruise. And they're requesting to close. Uh, it's a one-block area. There are only two businesses on it. Both of them are car parts uh, places, and they partner in this. And Motion to approve. <laughs> so moved. Second. Discussion? All good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Request for signature. That time of year, flyover uh, for the 4th of July. So every year, um, there is a, a federal form that has to be signed to request a flyover, and um, I've got the form right here, and asking re uh, your permission to sign it. Or for so you moved. to sign it. <laughs> Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you so much. Legal, Nick Otis. Thank you. Uh, I've got two items on the agenda today. The first one, uh, getting used to these, what Roscoe's done to these mics here. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the KDM settlement agreement. A little background on, on this. Uh, I, I know the mayor's familiar, but uh, Ms. Romine. Uh, KDM was uh, the general contractor on some significant upgrades to phosphorus removal and uh, improvement project at storm water and sewer. Uh, I won't get into all of it. We, we had some, some issues with KDM and uh, an arbitration was filed. So when the, the, there was a contract that called for arbitration instead of litigation, they initiated arbitration. We filed counterclaims. There was, um, and ultimately this settlement agreement, which I, I drafted, uh, resolves all, all of those issues. The one thing that I did not include in the settlement agreement um, at this time is that we are not waiving claims if there's warranty provisions or if we find that there's faulty work, for example. We're, we're not aware of, of any of those issues, but um, we didn't want to waive, like a lot of times, Mr. Romain, when you enter in a settlement agreement, you like both sides agree to waive everything. We want to do that here because Five years from now, maybe we dig something up and, oh my gosh, it's completely screwed up. So, um, but we're going to pay, um, th there was a dispute about how much was owed with change orders and other things like that. So this uh, calls for the city to pay $195,000. So this, uh, Jerry couldn't be here today, but this was uh, myself, the mayor, and Jerry uh, worked, worked on this pretty diligently. If we couldn't resolve this, we'd effectively have a trial in the arbitration matter that would be extremely time, con time consuming, call yeah. And it's difficult to predict what the arbitration panel would do, and there's a provision that the prevailing party would get attorneys. It could get, I mean, if it didn't go our way, it could get very expensive. So. The key is that uh, KDM subs will be paid as a part of this Correct. agreement. Correct, yep. There's a couple subcontractors that reached out to us that, that were not issues for the city. In fact, we enjoyed working with them. Uh, this provision calls for KDM's lawyer to pay um, within 30 days of, of receiving payment. So. And I think that was most important to Mr. Jackson, so. Yeah, that was definitely very important to him, so. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Discussion. I appreciate that we're not waiving claims. Does that go on? Is there some kind of warranty within the initial So I, I, can't sp I, I can't speak to what the exact warranties were. I, okay. I'm more frankly concerned of just if we find bad work or something like we're not aware of any I, I, I don't I'm not criticizing KDM the quality of their their work there was just some change order significant change order issues typically um, and, and I'm not trying to like disparage them I don't think they've been the general contractor on government projects a lot and when you do a change order you the Board of Works has to approve those and a lot of times they would just submit them and expect that the city would pay them and that at, in private work that's fine. When you're a governmental entity, you guys have to approve those, and that's where it kind of really got sideways with them. So. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Spectrum recycling. Thank you. Uh, so the second item is spectrum recycling. Uh, this this has to do with the. Um, I've 
Mr. Minnick, what, what overpass, I thought, what's it's Tipton, Tipton overpass. Uh, Spectrum Recycling is adjacent to, uh, or is on Tipton, and uh, we, we've had good conversations with, with Spectrum about trying to resolve this. We are being pushed by INDOT, and so I am requesting that you give us authority to initiate imminent domain proceedings, so hopefully we can resolve this relatively quickly. I just need a motion and an approval so that we can file that uh, in court. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Mary Ann Richards, open bid, sidewalk. As we continue, especially in those low-income census tract areas, improve the sidewalks. Marianne, could you come to the mic, please? Sure. Thank you. I can, I'll open them and hand them to you. We received two bids for the um, 20, plan year 2023 CDBG sidewalk replacement program. Affidavit of publication, this was published in the Herald Dispatch on March 19th, 2024 and March 26th, 2024. The first bid we received is from Reef Riley. Thank you, Mr. Mack. <laughs> okay, Reith Riley is proposing eight hundred twenty three thousand eight hundred thirty two dollars. Eight two three eight three two. Point zero zero. And the second bid we received is from PV Excavating. PV Excavating is proposing $1,183,270.1183270.00. Now these are higher than you Than have what's funds budgeted. For. So we're going to have to reduce the scope and the staff of engineering and community development and planning We'll review the quotes and see where we can reduce um, work scopes. Would that have to be rebid then? No, but I mean we'll have to come back for approval right. at, for at approval. a later meeting. Yeah. We, How we much do, we have yeah. something in our our bid that that allows for reduction in scope. Um, a lot of like INDOT and federal projects they shy away from that, make it very difficult. But um, we do shoot for the moon a lot of these and then have to adjust a little bit. Um, and that's where the bid review process is, is very important. So our motion should be to make sure. No, it's going to be taken under anything. advisement, and then we'll come we, next meeting. Mary Ann, we'll come back to us. Right, correct, I'll come back next in two weeks with a recommendation. Perfect. Okay, just real quick, uh, Mary Ann, um, you know, we have to report to the we have this settlement agreement in, uh, regarding the sidewalks that's been in existence for I think 15 some years. One of the difficulties of compliance has been just the cost in the last couple of years of, of sidewalks. How, how how much are we getting paved for this? For I don't know whether that's a Nick question or a you question, but just because it really was shocking to me when I, I have to cost. do this report with Nick Minnick every year, it, it's very expensive. Yeah. So um, so these projects we're really looking at a probably a eight block area is that mm. more or less um, and that's not even fixing every single issue within that eight block area so so we're talking about a you know just at or under a million dollars and that's that's not a not a significant part of the city still yeah. so the, the cost of sidewalks is continuing to increase um, I think a lot of times we build scope trying to hit hit a mark but we're using previous data as far as cost we try and up that a little bit but 
we're never exactly sure, especially at the beginning of the year, what those prices are going to come in at. So um, the prices continue to rise, um, just material and labor. Um, we have to be careful about timelines. There's, there's a lot of factors that are going into these projects that, that make it very, very challenging to, to do the massive amount of sidewalk work we need to do. And no alternatives, no new technology, no different way to do things? N not on the not on the projects that we're working on. We, we try to do some different things. We try to work with the street department and others to um, extend the life of decent sidewalk segments as, as long as we can. I think Mary Ann's program with CDBG has been huge for us because we, we have money budgeted for sidewalks, but um, her being able to invest in stabilizing neighborhoods through the infrastructure, through the sidewalks, is, is really, really important for us. So I think her program being able to put this kind of money towards sidewalks is, is hopefully going to make a, more of a difference than we have been able to make in the past. And the area that we're focusing on is Census Track 423, which is qualified as a low to moderate income track. Also, Lincoln School serves the students within that census tract. That is a walking school. They do not have bus service. So not only do we want to address the uh, ADA compliance, we also want to make it safer for the kids who walk to school so that they're not walking in the street because the Absolutely. sidewalks are so bad. There are some sidewalks that it's like a carpet of grass. There's all of the concrete is so broken up. So, uh, and, and I, as I mentioned, CDBG program is really key for us. We've tried to use out other federal funds on sidewalks, but what we find is we get an 80-20 grant, which is what most of them are. We're, we're getting about 50% of the work just because of the, the extra things added on when it goes through Federal Highway and other reviewers, whereas CDBG has, has a little more flexibility. So it's essentially a 100% grant, and we're able to get double what we would if we were using other federal funds. So it's a it's a it's great, great opportunity for us. And it is kind of thinking differently, because we have tried using other federal funds on these types of projects and it, without, with less efficiency. We'll look forward to you coming back. Thank you. Next item. The next item is um, it's that time in the CDBG HUD cycle that the city needs to complete a five-year consolidated plan and an analysis of impediments. I solicited quotes, proposals, and I received three. One of them we disallowed. And by we, I mean there was a screening committee made up of Nick Minnick, Craig Phillips, and myself. Um, the one that was disallowed was because it came in past the deadline. So we reviewed the proposals from the ARSH group and Wade Trim. They're a group out of Detroit or near Detroit. And after scoring the points, um, recommendation is to award the contract in the amount of $49,780. And this is a consolidated plan that will cover? That will color, cover five years. What it does is it addresses a needs assessment for the city over the next five years, and it invites the public uh, through our citizen participation plan to help identify these priorities. It will set up an annual action plan for next year, and it also will include what's called an analysis of impediments to p fair housing. That will be over five years, but every year I have to set goals. So my question is, that's 49,000 you said? 49,780. We're also spending quite a bit on a consolidated plan, comprehensive plan, 
through Mr. Phillips the difference between these two? Two different organizations, purposes. Mine is to satisfy a federal requirement to draw down the HUD funds. Craig's is to satisfy a local need for a Hold on, Fair. but is it going to be simple, similar information? No. No. So it'll be completely separate. Yeah, the, so, and we, we looked at the consultants that had submitted and scored very well in our comprehensive plan review. So we, we looked at all those consultants, very few if any of them, uh, I think one of them, McKenna, which turned in late, actually um, had done many of these types of programs. So the, the two that we scored, um, they do CDBG type comp plans like this over and over and over again. Um, the the uh, ARSH group has done the cities and they do a lot throughout Northwest Indiana and through the state. Um, Wade Trim has done Michigan cities in Indiana, but most of their experience is in Michigan. So both very qualified in this specific type of work. It's very, very different from what we are going to look at for the whole comp plan. So what is the difference then between the housing comprehensive or the comprehensive plan that the planning department's doing regarding housing and what you're going to do regarding housing? Hopefully, I'm not familiar with what planning department is doing. Um, they Phil can probably use the information in the analysis of impediments in their housing plan. Sure. So the the housing um, element, if you will, of the con of the uh, comprehensive plan will take a look at both the um, recent housing uh, study that we did with HFL, as well as it'll take into account other studies like this. Um, I think the housing element of the comprehensive plan is going to take it look, is going to take a look at more of the geographic um, availability of property and utilities and things like that to help us identify and um, create uh, priorities in terms of location with regard to all types of housing across the city. This consolidated plan is a specific federal requirement with a very regimented um, set of rules that have to be followed. Um, whenever we receive our um, entitlement funds, we have to go through this process. They're, they're separate processes. The, comp the comprehensive plan is citywide. This is specific to just specific census tracts. Um, and then the comprehensive plan also handles a lot of other topics like transportation and um, growth and things like that. So, yeah, they're, they're not related. You, do, you don't see communities combining consolidated plans and, con and comprehensive plans ever. So it's not, they're totally different animals. Well. You feel differently. I feel differently, but we'll Big, leave it. Bigger scope. Our comprehensive plan has a bigger scope and goes way beyond, um, the, it goes more, more broadly what, you know, what's required as far as the city's future growth and development. The consolidated plan is a specific federal requirement for low to moderate income census tracts and areas that are that's beyond just, um, you know, the, the, I guess it's, it's more specific to the requirements the federal government has for the service of people in low and moderate income areas of the city. So they're just, it's, it, it's just a true statement. Consolidated plans and comprehensive plans aren't done at the same time. They're not done in the same scope. Um, so this is not, it would not be appropriate for the consultant that we've hired to do the consolidated plan. That's not the type of work that they do. Do I, but, I mean, you guys that? looked through that. No, not yet. Okay. I'll make Correct. a motion to approve. Correct. But it sounds like you guys looked through the. Yeah. Our comprehensive um, plan and, and transportation plan are, um, that's a plan that I think it has a very, very large public uh, involvement component that kind of helps solidify a lot of the other planning activities we've been doing. But it's really that long range, really big picture really wide you know, city. The consolidated plan is, is um, it's going to be less exciting for people. <laughs> uh, the document is going to be more on the regulatory side of things. Mm -hmm. So so it's the compliance side, I guess. So it's, it's essentially compliance with 
with the federal regulations associated with, with HUD funds. So as an entitlement community, we, we have to kind of follow their kind of very rigid guidelines as to what they want to see in a report. Uh, when, when it comes to comprehensive plan, that's, that is a completely different animal. We have a lot of plans. Let's make sure we look forward to using the plans. So uh, you had a motion. I will second that. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Beth West, fire sprinkler inspection agreement. I basically just need a signature. This is our annual um, inspection of the sprinkler system in the garage in the office area. We need this due to the housing the buses in the garage. It's, it's a requirement through NERPC basically to have a sprinkler system. So I, it's a contract that I need to have the mayor sign so I can return it so they can in, schedule for inspection. Motion Beth, I got a approve. question for you real quick. If, uh, oh, hold on, one motion. motion. So moved. Second discussion, <clears throat> Mr. Warner. I want to make sure that the pressure switch inside your system is being addressed because when we flush in that area, you guys shouldn't have to put your uh, fire suppression system in the test. So I, I feel like when it, that pressure We dropped, only had to do that once and it was because the switch was bad and it has been replaced. We haven't had to do it since. Okay, I'm, what I'm asking is make sure that they check that switch out for there and make sure that the check valve is, is working correctly. Yeah. That, that's it what it we'll wasn't, talk. that's what set it off the last time and we have since had it addressed and a whole new switch was put in uh, about two years ago. And we haven't had a problem with it since. And is that what you were suggesting? Yeah, I just I know in the past when we flush the hydrant right on the corner, it sets their fire alarm off, and uh, so there there needs to be some work done inside. I just want to make sure that was addressed. So I do have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Melissa Mischke, permit renewal. How met? We have, uh, Helmet was not previously in compliance with the permit, so they have a, they are currently now in compliance. So we have a new permit that we've executed and need signatures for. Helmet is a great partner and you're <laughs> suggesting they are within I, compliance. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve. Second, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye, motion passes. Letters and numbers. Okay. So letters and numbers, I think we're on the mostly side street sections of it right now. <coughs> if I'm not wrong, water's nearly, water's nearly completed on that side. So more of stormwater activities on letters and numbers. We're about 80% complete on that. So I'd like to have the uh, invoice paid. For and A and B, are we doing them both together? I can do okay. both of them. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the payment of 2A and 2B. Pay number 10. Second discussion. And just to confirm the amounts for each. So 2A is going to be 185500.32. And 2B is going to be 104498.39. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Craig Phillips, Newport Landing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, um, I have three different landscaping maintenance contract approval requests. The first one is Newport Landing. Um, since this is um, services provided, we're not required to seek uh, quotes for this. Um, so we've reached out to the same company that we've been working with for a number of years on this type of maintenance for Newport Landing. Um, there are no changes to the scope of the services that are being provided. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it does include um, trash pickup, just so you're, you're aware of that as well, throughout the course of their contract. Um, 
The contract amount has increased slightly since the last uh, con the contract last year, uh, from roughly twenty-six thousand nine hundred dollars to twenty-eight thousand two hundred sixty-eight dollars, which is a pretty nominal cost given the way things are going up uh, in cost. Everything's going up in cost. Um, don't like to see that, but it's I think reality: the cost of gas, the cost of um, labor, etc. Um, so no changes really in anything from last year other than the nominal increase in the cost of the service. Uh, this exceeds the amount that I'm allowed to spend without board approval, so I would request your approval for this contract for 2024. And we okay. feel comfortable not putting this out for bid? We don't have to put this out for right. bid. It's, it's services. Correct. They've done a good job for us. Um, we have no need to seek other, other companies for this service. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. <clears throat> in that same vein, Plaza 618 maintenance. Um, Mofield Properties has done a good job of maintaining that for us over the years. Uh, they've given us a quote for this year. Again, a slight increase in cost. Um, the biggest increase in cost is the, is the cost per week for the maintenance. Going from $85 a week to $90 a week, again, um, pretty nominal increase in cost. They haven't increased this cost in a few years. Um, again, it's the same scope of work that they've done. Again, they, I think they've done, I think everybody would agree, they've done a pretty nice job of maintaining the plaza for us. Again, uh, not haven't received any uh, quotes on this, but don't see any need to change the company that we're working with to provide this service. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Discussion. And they do a good job focused on the spotless of downtown. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. All right. And then I did receive, um, I did receive two proposals for the maintenance of Beechwood Lakes property this year. Um, I didn't directly solicit those, but one of the companies that we work with submitted an additional proposal uh, for that service. So you have one from K&K &K Outdoor Services uh, showing mowing, uh, regular uh, mowing, and cost per labor per hour for additional services. Additional services includes things like leaf pickup that we do in the fall. Um, <clears throat> Besides that, it's basically just mowing out there for the most part and some spring cleanup. Um, so once you take a look at uh, the cost of the mowing and the labor uh, for the, the, the additional services, you've got $750 per week, um, or sorry, per, per mowing, and usually we, we mow out there every other week, um, maybe less depending on the weather. Um, and then the additional services we expect a total of about $15,000 when you add everything all up, uh, maybe plus or minus depending on um, how many leaves uh, need to be moved and things like that. So that's K&K. &K. Um, and then the other uh, proposal we received was from Mofield Property Services who does the work on the plaza for us. Um, and they gave us a, it's a different cost per cutting of $900 per cutting and the same for um, additional services, but they also included a spring cleanup, uh, which we do anyway. I just itemized it that way. Um, given, I think, some problems we've had uh, with previous contractors with regard to the Beachwood Lakes property in particular, uh, there was some confusion between the provider last year and a previous provider. I don't feel like dealing with that again this year. There, uh, and Mr. Otis has been involved in some of these conversations that have been unfortunately going on too long. Um, we're actually, I think I'm gonna actually re recommend this year that we go with Mofield Property Services for this. Um, even though they are more, um, we do know that they provide us a good service. I don't have any questions or concerns about the service they provide, the quality of the service. And rather than um, try to chase after things or deal with conflicts with previous, uh, previous uh, contractors, I think I'd like to rec recommend that we go with Mofield Property Services this year for this, and we do have the budget for this. Because you haven't used either of these last year that caused the problem. 
uh, I, we used K and K, and they were kind of, it, it, it's complicated to explain, but there were some issues with, uh, with service. Motion to approve Mofield Property Services. Yeah, if you feel that, that that's best based on, I mean, if we're spending more time because we have to track down or keep up with stuff, then we're losing money in the long run anyway. So if that's what you feel is best, then yes, motion to approve. And I will second that. And I will also say, I mean, and again, we've got high standards. And that is really, Beachwood Lakes is high standard. People see it when we're looking to develop that area. We need that property um, looking top notch like everything else. So um, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Any other unfinished business? I don't think so. Understand we will be focused on the plywood over windows. Uh, people have had plenty of time. It's spring. So uh, know that ahead. Mr. Minnick. Mr. Ogle is here, and I don't know if he heard <laughs> us, but we have confirmed that uh, 7 a.m. Uh, will be the focus for the state, and Mr. Minnick will make sure that happens. So. I'm happy to yell at you, Mr. Ogle. Yeah. Fine. I'm used to it. With that, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Have a great day, everybody.